In these examples, we'll look at two different ways of calculating the probability involving or. In the example I have, we're going to roll a die one time. And let's look at, uh, first of all, what are the primes and what are the composites? So a number is prime if it has only uh, two factors, itself and one. And I just want to circle the primes here. Two is prime, three is pri prime, and five is prime. Technically, uh, one is considered neither prime nor composite. And let's circle the numbers that are considered composites, meaning they have more than two factors. Uh, that would be four and six. All right, we want to place these uh, primes and composites into their correct bubbles uh, in their correct areas in the Venn diagram. And as we can see, there are, num there are no numbers that are both prime and composite. So for that reason, uh, 2, 3, and 5 will be in the A only region, 4 and 6 will be in the B only region, and 1 will actually go outside both bubbles. All right, so one of the methods we can use to calculate a probability of A or B is to calculate the probability using the Venn diagram. We just want to look for successes out of the total. So anybody who's in the A region or the B region or even both would qualify as a success. So you just got to count them up. Five out of six. Now you may notice that uh, it just so happens that here, the probability of A or B could also be calculated using the probability of A plus the probability of B. So that would be 3 sixths for A and 2 sixths for B making our probability 5 out of 6. That's a good way to do it, too. We'll see in the next example, though, that uh, a problem can occur with that approach. So in the next example, we want A to represent outcomes that are greater than 2. B represents outcomes less than 4. This is one that we had done before. Uh, three is a number they share in common. Uh, we'll have four, five, and six over here, and one and two over here. So if we want to find the probability of A or B, it will be as simple as just counting up how many are in the success region which is the gray shaded region, six. And there's a total of six. So the probability of A or B here is one. So if you roll a die one time, it's guaranteed that you'll get a number that's either greater than two or less than four. So in order to see why the formula above here doesn't quite work in this situation. Let's try it. We'll do the probability of A. 
So what's the probability of A? It will be 4 out of 6. Uh, the reason why is this is a success for A. So is this. And so is this. But even 3 is a success for A as well. 4 out of 6. When it comes to B, we see that 1 is a success, and so is 2, and even 3 is as well. So, that's 3 out of 6. Does the formula give us the correct probability? The answer is no. In this case, it doesn't work. Why, though? Because we kept too many copies of the 3. You're only supposed to keep it one time, but we actually included it as part of the probability of A, and also the probability of B has it in there, too. So in order to make a correction for this, what we'll do is we'll modify the formula just a little bit. We need to subtract one copy of the probability of A and B, the middle region. Because it gets counted twice, we have to make sure that it um, doesn't count things twice. <laughs> so the probability of A will still be 4 out of 6, and the probability of B will still be 3 out of 6. But what we'll do is we'll subtract the probability of A and B, which is 1 out of 6. That correction will uh, result in us getting the correct final answer. 6 out of 6, which is 1. So why wasn't that correction needed in the case above? It's because they were mutually exclusive. When you have mutually exclusive events, they don't share any outcomes in common, so there's no chance for elements to get counted twice. But these ones are not mutually exclusive means they have outcomes in common which will get counted twice if we just simply add the probabilities. So the point is if you have mutually exclusive then you can do the probability of A plus the probability of B but if you have not mutually exclusive we have to do probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. Now you can always use this approach just to be safe. This formula will always work. It's just that your probability of A and B for mutually exclusive cases would be zero.